Hmm. Thought about this a bit, and uh, because naturally, as an artist, one is self-reflective about the technique. That one's not only one's technique, but why one does things. And I come to sonification. Really, I come as a composer. To me, the hearing process and what is going on culturally around me is the primary reason why I'm doing sonification, even though the outcome can be somewhat pragmatic. In other words, I don't make a distinction between this is art and therefore it's not useful and this is useful, therefore it's not art. That's that whole division of art and technology problem that I talked about earlier, which I don't sort of agree with. So, from an artistic perspective, from the perspective of someone who's an artist, I, I am interested in sonification because, as an artist, I think of my role primarily as being someone who reveals things in the world, reveals things to the world and the people around me that are not obvious, that are hidden, if you like. And so we live in a world which is constantly, things are being covered all the time as things become, you know, there was a time when, when computers had cables attached to them and networks were pieces of cable attached to other pieces of cable and you could see it all. And, um, you know, everything moves slowly enough for you to be able to, to sort of have a sense of what was going. With technology, more and more what happens is that the technology gets embedded in our lives and we lose the relationship with it because it becomes part of us. This is, this is um, you know, a phenomenon that's known um, uh, in terms of our relationship with technology. And so m one of the things that I'm interested in doing with sonification is to reveal through sound things which have become or have always been hidden. So, um, in, in the, and there are sort of two ways, there's a development of that process. So this is not about, for me, the arts, are, the, the arts that are interesting are not primarily about me expressing myself. It's not that I don't express myself in what I do. I think that will happen automatically. But what I'm interested in doing is revealing something in the world that is interesting, that I hope other people find interesting. That, that gives them a context in their lives that they didn't have before. It's a type of revealing. It's a type of... Hmm, it's a, that's a cultural issue. It's not a technical issue. It's a cultural issue. You live in a world where all this happens and, you know, what, what, is, it, what is the experience of that when you open it a bit? When you don't cover it up when you don't make it automatically when you when you when you you challenge your assumptions and in the when we first started working with computers to make sound or to make music one of the things that we did was explore algorithms so we take an algorithm and we would use an algorithm to generate musical ideas or explore a music explore the music of pi say or whatever, um, and I, I think of that as being very platonic, because the algorithm is a known algorithm. It's a, um, it's like exploring a, a crystal structure as opposed to the crystalline aspect of a rock. So if you think about, you've got a crystal structure which is the abstraction. It's everything's perfect. Uh, you can see the symmetries in the structure, so forth and so on. And then there's the actual implementation of that structure in physical form. And that's like the difference between algorithmic composition and sonification. Sonification, you're not dealing with the algorithm for the generation of it, you're dealing with the result of the process. You don't need to know the algorithm. So we have stock markets that do very complex things. We don't need to know the algorithmic process of the stock market to experience the stock market. We experience the stock market through the translation of the data into experiential um, perception. And so 
it's natural for me to have moved from a period of time when I worked in expressing algorithms to having gained more and more access to more and more t data to start to experience the real world, if you like, or closer to the real world through the data itself. It's like there's an Apollonian or aspect and a Dionysian aspect. There's, if you like, Plato and Aristotle. And you have these two characters. Plato is the idealist. He talks about ideals. Aristotle is about the real, the realisation of the idea in the physical, messy world. And I think algorithmic composition is like Plato and sonification is like um, Aristotle. And so that, for me, is... The state, the state that we're in today as a culture is we're more Aristotelian. We've got more access to the data. We're generating more and more data. There's huge amounts of data being generated every day that we don't, we sort of, have, we don't know how to handle it. And so my interest in, is in projects where I can reveal something about the nature of what it is that's happening in the world that people live in by using the data. And so the Netson project is about something which is really fundamental to our lives today. Network, computer networks are fundamental to our lives today. You can't say that 30 years ago. 30 years ago a computer network was, well, very primitive, very slow, always cable. Now they're, they're hidden, the networks disappeared into the walls. And machines are all sorts of different machines from mobile machines, mobile devices that you hold in your hand, put in your pocket that alert you some way, to desktop machines, to, to um, the interfaces through Wi-Fi and not cable and so it, The whole thing has become virtualized much more. And so, in, uh, and so more abstract and so more difficult to understand how it all interacts with itself. In other words, we have created a mystery in our lives um, of some aspect of our life that, and I, I want to uncover that, that covering to, to experience the, the way it is, but also the unusual joy of it. I mean, I, I think it's a remarkable, these you know, computer networks are very special things that we've made and we have invested so much of our lives in them without even thinking of it, that we've done that. It's a, yeah, I mean, I, I actually think of it on that level, that it's a, it's almost a, maybe it's a bit, you, it's easy to misunderstand this, but there's a sort of spiritual dimension to it, which is that it, our spirit is, we put so much energy into these into these systems, they they transport so much of our energy that it that is the thing that creates the form of it. And so I'm interested in revealing that. Um, so that's for me what the Network Sonification Project is ultimately about. Of course you can, if I'm talking to a, an, um, an IT person who's interested in monitoring the network, I can talk at that level and say it does this and it does that and and um, you know you can observe this and you can observe that and we're about monitoring for change rather than trying to you know prevent hacking necessarily for, uh, we're trying to observe when it happens it's all those there's a pragmatic side to it which is very clear but it's not one or the other and um, the big question that it raises that sonification raises artistically is about form um, and I think form is changing. Form in music is changing. Not an unusual thing to say. Form in music has always changed. Music is always reflecting the society and often leading the society structures without um, ahead of time. Um, the, what I mean by that is that we listen to music differently today than we've listened to it in the past. We Because we can. You know, you can be switching channels on a television and you can hear 20 different types of music, a little snip of 20 different types of music, all within the space of a minute. And somehow we zip, we zone into it, we, we, un, we get it in its context and we zone out and go into something else and 
we can go from a football match to a, you know, um, to a um, something, you know, an intimate space in a family home to a, to a, um, you know, a Beethoven symphony to a, we just jump around all the time and we do this with audio as well, you know, we have these incredible devices, these iPhones where we can just select bits of songs and we listen through to it and, and so what's in fact happening is that we're listening less and less to whole pieces, especially from the classical literature, but even pop songs. You know, three minutes for a pop song is quite a, you know. So I have a sort of challenge to people, which is when, if you're interested in classical music, when was the last time you listened to a whole symphony? And people tell me more and more that it's a longer and longer time ago. They're not doing it. It's not part of the rhythm of their lives. This means that the old concept of form, you have a beginning, you have a repeat of the beginning to make sure you've got it. You have a development section, which transition section, which moves into a new idea. And then you have a development section, which plays around with these. And then eventually you come back to what it was originally with any resolutions made. The old concept of a sonata form, for example, which is what I described. This is not relevant to our lives anymore. That idea that such a long structure in, built in such a way is relevant to our lives is very it's foreign. Instead, so, uh, so as a composer, why would I make music that is built like that when people are not going to listen to it that way? Their li the structure of their lives is not geared towards that music. That, so I'm interested in finding ways of expressing what it is I'm trying to do to people in a way that they're able to listen. And that means making music that doesn't have a beginning necessarily, a single beginning, doesn't have an end, doesn't have a development, so that if you miss it, it doesn't mean anything. But to provide musical moments for people in, in what they do. And there's this very interesting sort of I make a little twist on um, uh, on a statement of juries about vision in, in which I and the twist is to say it's not about whether this is music or that's music this is not music this is sonification this is it's not about that at all it's like it but it's about when is it music when you listen can you get a have a musical experience and if I can achieve that then that that is um, that is that is what I'm trying to that that is a success in that sense for me. It's a formal success because I've provided a musical moment. And if you listen more and more, you find more musical moments, and you hear that they are related. But it's not necessary to make sense of what you hear to hear the, all the moments together, and they may be in different orders and so forth. And so I think one of the th interesting things that sonification gives you is that you just dip into the data stream and this data stream is there and you hear the sonification you get something from it and you dip out again and this means that as a composer you have a challenge your ego because you're not you can't impose on the listener the whole you're making the listener more more active compositionally and i think that's that's um making a listener more active compositionally is one of the things that a composer needs to do today. So I, I feel like I need to do that. It's not about imposing my idea on the audience. It's about encouraging the audience to listen. And of course I'm providing the material, but they're free to interpret it in the way they want.